In this video, we're asked to solve a resistor network by using Kirchhoff's laws. And the reason we're using Kirchhoff's laws here is because the resistors are not in series or parallel. To make it clear why this is true, let's look at these two resistors. If you think they're in parallel, well, we don't have a problem with this side of them that's connected directly by wire. But if I look at the other side, there's an extra power source in the way here. So the voltage can't be the same across each of these resistors, which is the defining characteristic of parallel resistors. So they're not parallel. If you think they're in series, that's wrong because whatever current is passing through this one gets split at this node. So the two resistors can't possibly have the same current going through them, which is the defining characteristic of series resistors. So we're stuck having to use a different tool set and that's Kirchhoff's laws. So what I'm gonna do here is start with Kirchhoff's voltage law and I'm gonna make sure that I touch every single circuit element with my voltage loops, because I know my equations must involve every resistor and power source. So I'll just go ahead and call this loop one. We're gonna stay inside that upper loop. I'll call this loop two, the lower left loop, and loop three, the lower right loop. In each of these loops, I'm gonna start at the lower left-hand corner to keep myself organized. And then I have to remember the rules for voltage increases and decreases. If I'm going the same direction as the current across a resistor, that must be a voltage drop. If I'm going the opposite direction, it would be a voltage increase. If I go from the negative to positive terminal of a battery, that's a voltage increase and vice versa. And now I can write down my first three equations. As I travel through my first loop, I go the opposite direction of current over this four ohm resistor. So I'm gonna have a voltage increase there. The magnitude is given by Ohm's law, that's V equals IR. So I have plus four I4. Then I cross over this two ohm resistor in the opposite direction of I2, and I get plus two I2. And then I cross over this five ohm resistor in the same direction as I3, so that's negative five I3. And I'm back where I started, so the sum of all those changes must be zero. That's just saying, if you make a complete loop, you end up back at the same potential you were to begin with. Number two, I cross over this two ohm resistor, same direction as I6. I cross over this two ohm resistor, opposite direction of I5, that's a voltage increase, two I5. I cross over this four ohm resistor, same direction as I4. And finally, I go from the high side to the low side of this power source, so that's minus two volts. In loop three, the first thing that I hit, I go from the low side to the high side of this power source, that's six volts. The second thing I hit, same direction as I2 across the two ohm resistor. And the final piece here, same direction as I5 across the two ohm resistor. And I'm back where I started. Next, I use Kirchhoff's current law, which says that all the current entering a node must add up to zero. Another way of saying that is that all the currents into a node must be equal to all the currents out of the node. So I'm going to label these nodes number four and five and six. And look at all the currents coming in and out. That'll get us six equations for our six unknowns. And then we'll go to the computer algebra system. At node 4, I4 is coming in and I3 is coming in, I6 is coming out. At node 5, I have I2 coming in, I4 and I5 coming out. At node 6, I have I1 coming in, I2 and I3 coming out. All right, so now we're going to plug all these equations into a computer algebra system and solve the system. All right, we're working in a computer algebra system called WX Maxima here. This is an open source computer algebra system and I'll post a link to the download page in the description. I've entered all my equations with the right syntax and I hit shift enter. And Maxima is going to repeat these equations to me and I can just double check that I've done them all right. Everything looks good to me, so now I'm going to solve the system. So there's the syntax. You solve your set of equations for your set of variables. Hit shift enter. And notice that Maxima spits out exact fractional solutions for these. I'm not really interested in that. I'd rather have decimal approximations. So I'm going to ask Maxima to round the prior result. And now I've got my decimal approximations. Rounding all these to three sig figs. So we've got every branch current in the circuit. Note that one of these is negative. I4 came out negative. And all that means is that the actual direction of I4 is opposite to the way it was drawn. Finally, we're asked to get the potential difference from node A to node B. So all I need for this is the voltage drop across this two ohm resistor. Now that I have the current through that resistor, it's no big deal. VAB 
It's going to be the voltage drop across that resistor. It's given by Ohm's law, I times R. The current is 1.51 amps. The resistance was 2 ohms. And I get 3.02 volts. So in the lab, I can test this by just putting the multimeter probes at these two junctions in the circuit, and I should get very close to 3 volts. If you find the physics content on Zach's lab helpful, click on the Zach's lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.